Hello and welcome to the very little practice it's been too many weeks i need to get back into the swing of things it is like a fluff <laughs> i have a ton of things that i want to do hello and welcome to the fairy little knitting podcast i'm marcia also known as fairy little and this is my podcast all about knitting I hope that you had an amazing Christmas and New Year and whatever other holiday you celebrate in there. I hope it was just full of wonderful excitement and family and great food. I know I ate a ton and now I need to start looking at my waistline because that's going to be a thing. <laughs> I want to welcome you all back. It is 2019 and this year is going to be so full of knitting which I'm excited about. Today's episode, we are going to talk about works in progress. We're gonna talk about some finished objects and I've got some knit alongs that have closed and some things to show you, names to draw, etc. and jibber jabber. So let's get into it. I wanna start off with finished objects because I had set a goal for myself to knit four sweaters in four weeks and I wanted to say that I got it done. I knit four sweaters in three and a half weeks. I'll show a picture here because all of them have their sweaters so they, they're they they're not within arm's reach for me. So I'll show you the picture. Um, what you're going to see is the back of all of the girls because um, I don't like putting uh, my girls on social media as well as um, there's other children that I cannot put on social media. So you get to see the backs of them and that's just uh, respecting their privacy. And I I used the Skaha sweater pattern, but I tweaked it a ton. It's essentially a whole different pattern now for, for this style. And it's still knit from the bottom up but I have the kids sizes and adult sizes. I did it with four inches of ease and I used Barocco vintage yarn for all of them. So what I did after those were finished is because I was doing a work in progress, uh, project UFO Cal, um, anytime I try to like reel myself in essentially then I just cast everything on so what I did instead of working on works in progress is I cast on four hats so not only did the girls get each a brand new sweater but they also got a new hat and I I have two to show you the other two are not here right now uh, this it's knit in Bernat Premium. I wanted something that had absolutely no wool content because the girls complain about itchy heads and stuff. So I wanted something with absolutely no wool content that they would not complain about, but that they would still throw on their heads because they need hat coverage. So this pattern is actually my uh, go-to just uh, go-to pattern. Uh, normally I do it with a shorter shorter brim and shorter body to the hat but I did I did it longer and with a wider brim because this is the style right now in this area is to have a folded brim and and to have it really baggy at the back and I know that this is a style that was big probably a year or two ago in other areas but we're behind so it's okay for us so I did uh, a yellow one that matches the yellow and blue sweater. I did a black one. I did this purple one and I did a white one. So the yellow one that I did, I did that one out of Barocco Vintage. And then these ones are all the Bernat Premium. And I gave the remainder of the skeins to each of the girls. They want pom-poms, so I'm just gonna grab the pom-pom maker and show them how to do it and then get them to make the pom-poms as a fun thing to do and then I will attach them on here because I think they want to alternate colors or something. But I also want to show them how they can do a pom-pom and do a, a multiple pom-poms and then how they can easily switch it out for a different pom-pom if they want. 
different palm if they want. So these are super comfy. They are definitely, definitely slouchy at the back. I am going to write up this pattern and put it on on Ravelry just as a recipe and it will be a free pattern. I don't know when I will be able to get to it. It's on the top of my mind right now. So hopefully, hopefully soon. I know I say that about a bunch of different things, but it's really, I have a lot going on. So it's really hard <laughs> to remember all of the things all the time. I write a lot down actually to keep track of things. So, so those are done. So I have eight finished objects. The next thing I wanted to talk about, um, I'll just talk about quickly about the top that I'm wearing. This is called the Winter Moss Sweater. Uh, it's a free pattern. You can find it on Ravelry uh, and it is, I don't know who it's by. I think it's by Drops. I know the yarn is Drops Alpaca and it's like a mustardy color, black and gray are the, the, three colors in it. It was a su super simple knit. I actually made the sleeves shorter than, than they are. I think they come down to about here, but also there is a hack to do full sleeves. I didn't do that. I wanted something with shorter sleeves. So that's, and I knit this probably three years ago. I'd like to say it's, it's been a while, but it's, it's a fingering weight color work and I really love it so and I've worn it on the podcast before you've seen this before it's not it's not new okay so now for works in progress I have three works in progress but they're all the same thing it is like a fox slaughterhouse over here I am doing Mr. Fitzwilliam Fox by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears and I have a ton of body parts, but they're not put together. Poor fox. So I'll show you what I have and by, I'll show you what I have by the next episode. All of the Mr. Fitzwilliams should be complete. I've been only working on that. So I have my heads, Mr. Fitzwilliams heads completed with their eyes in. So all these guys are completed. I probably should have gone down a needle size. I'm a loose knitter and it just, I'm a loose knitter. So it just makes sense for me to go down a needle size. I didn't end up doing that. The first one I knit fairly tightly, but as I went along, I got looser and looser and you can tell that in the bodies as well. It's super cute though. It's, he's going to be so adorable. So each of these foxes is going to have there, I'm going to do the sweater out of the same yarn that I knit the sweaters for the girls out of. So each of their foxes will have a matching sweater to their sweaters. <laughs> I have enough yarn left over that I can do that. So here's the three bodies. They are done. Some of the ends need to be woven in on, yeah, on some of them. I'm just leaving the ends right now because a lot of the ends are used for attaching the parts. So I'm not going to weave in a bunch of these ends until all of the parts are attached and then I'll know what I can weave in specifically. So those are the bodies. And then these are the arms. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Yeah. So I've got all of the arms done. Whoop. Six arms. These are so cute. These are the ears. <laughs> so the ears are done. They're knit in the round. All of these pieces are knit in the round. And then the other color is double stitched on the contrast color here. It's double stitched on. So you just follow your stitches and stitch over the, the stitches to create the two colors. And it makes it so that there's no holes and it's just really smooth and very pretty. So those are the ears. And here are the tails. I have my stitch marker attached there so I don't lose it. Here's the three little tails. They all need to be stuffed 
So that's where that is. So I have six feet to do, and then I have their clothes to do, and I have to stuff them and put noses on and all of the all of the bits. Oh, and here's the muzzles. So here's the three muzzle bits. This is where their noses get attached. Super cute. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited about these. I love knitting toys. And to be honest, I think the only toys I have ever knit are Kay's toys. They're my very first toys to knit. And I did Mr. Bakery Bear and Mrs. Bakery Bear. And I have the pattern for her um, gelato giraffe and Mr. Fitzwilliams Fox. So Mr. Fitzwilliam Fox is... I'm super excited about him. I haven't done gelato giraffe yet. I'm, I don't know when, when I will get to gelato giraffe, but I know it's, there's such great patterns and it's also something that would be really great for a little gift. So maybe I'll just do a bunch and then have them aside for gifts for kids. I'm really enjoying this. If you are interested in a cute little pattern, and you don't mind piecing things together or you want to learn how to piece things together, then this is a really great pattern. It's got a lot of pieces. It's got two different colors for the body. And then these are socks that go over his little feet, a scarf, and a little jacket. So it's super cute. I'm enjoying myself. I have six legs to do. Then I have six socks to do, three sweaters, and three scarves. And then all of them will be done. I had a couple knit alongs going on uh, and one just ended. It's January the 2nd. So it just ended yesterday. I actually haven't closed the thread yet. I'm going to go in and through close it. I threw it out there to say that we could extend it for an extra month if anyone was interested. Nobody um, said they were interested in that. So I'm going to close it. It's, it's going to be shut down. And today I'm going to draw the prizes so it's going to be closed actually in minutes because I will do it before I draw the prizes. I am going to draw multiple prizes and very excited about that because I'm going to give away some yarn. <laughs> also, I had a Skaha sweater cowl that I was running that closed at the end of November. I got a hold of the winner. She let me know what color she was interested in. It was actually not a color that I carry in my stash, so I ordered it for her and had it custom done for her and was mailed to me. And the Yarn Dyers Ginger Snap Yarn, she, her yarn is beautiful. So the color that was chosen was a mustard color. So this is called Mustard Mash by Ginger Snap Yarn and she is based out of Calgary, Alberta. So my plan was to uh, support a d dyer that I know but also a Canadian one which I'm super excited about that I get to share this lovely squishiness because you can't always get all of the dyers everywhere. Sometimes it's... Um, she has an online shop which you can purchase from but if you don't know about a dyer then you don't order from that dyer. So Ginger Snap Yarn, her colors are amazing. She had this beautiful mustard. I'm so happy about this. And I'm going to be sending this off this week. And it's got a cute little sticker on the back that says, we wish you Merry Christmas. So that is going to the Skaha Sweater Cowl winner, who is Nancy from Texas. So Nancy, this is going to be coming to you and I'm really excited to be sending this to you. Yeah, it's great. Not only did Kim send that in my package, but she sent a little giveaway as well. She said I could keep something or give it away or whatever I would like. And I love her yarn, so I'm going to keep one and I'm going to give one away. But she also sent this cute little project bag, little notions pouch, which is adorable with its little sheepiness on the front. So cute. I love it. And she sent these two yarns. They're both, these are both fingering weight yarns. This is called this is Driftwood, Driftwood and this is Passion Flower, 80% Merino, 20% nylon. 425 yards and 110 gram skeins. Both of these are my color. 
They're both my color. This one is something that I'm very attracted to right now and I wanna knit everything out of this color. So this is probably the one I'm gonna keep and then I'll do this one as part of a giveaway. So awesome, thank you so much, Kim. I will put her information below, so if you are interested in her yarn, go down below. She has an Etsy shop. You can order her yarn online. If you see a color that she doesn't have in her shop, um, I'm sure if you contact her, she was more than willing to dye up this yarn specifically for, for me and and sent it very quickly. So I think I think she had it in the mail within a week of me speaking to her. Canada Post is on strike, so it took a little bit longer to get here, but I'm really excited about that. I've actually had it on hand for a couple weeks because I wanted to talk about it before I sent it out, but now I can send it out. It's a very happy new year, exciting thing for Nancy to receive that, so I'm very excited about that. Now we're closing Project UFO. I'm just gonna go do that and I'll be right back. For Project UFO, I pulled five different names. I drew five different names from the thread. There was 18 posts in there. One was deleted, so that would have, if it had actually been a, a post, it would have won one of the prizes, but it was deleted, so I don't know if it was a comment or if it was an actual post. So what I did is I closed the thread, went in there, drew five different names, and I drew until I got people who had posted their work in progress and their finished object and made sure that there was no comments. It took a while because I needed to <laughs> redraw quite a few of them, especially I, I commented, so there was a lot of me that I was drawing. Then I went into the prize winners' names, found their actual name, not just their Ravelry name. And I hope your favorite colors are up to date because that's what I used for my inspiration for your specific prize. So I'm hoping that works for you. I also tried, I pulled from my stash, so I tried to match kind of your color palette as much as I could. There was one I really struggled with. And when you, when that person sees the color, they might, they'll probably understand that it was them that I was struggling with because I don't necessarily have their favorite colors in my, my stash. So I tried to get as close as I could. So without further ado, here are the five winners of the Project UFO Cal. The first winner was post number 13, who is Fiber Stasher, who is Diana. And Diana, you like all the colors, so you were very easy. This is your yarn, it's Daydream Yarns in the Wine O'Clock colorway, and it is gorgeous. So get a hold of me with your address. You can get a hold of me on Ravelry or Instagram. Instagram is a little bit easier if you direct message me there. I get those messages a lot quicker, but I will send this to you. So that is prize winner one. The second winner, is post number nine, who is CCY, who is Cindy. And Cindy, you have won this beautiful Tangled Gypsies yarn in the Catfish on the Table colorway. It is gorgeous. It's got purples and greens and white in there. And this one is 450 yards fingering weight yarn as well. So get your information to me and I will send this on its way. I'm not gonna keep saying that because you guys know to, you guys know, just get a hold of me and I will send it to you. Okay, so the next one, prize number three goes to post number seven, who is Fiber Stasher, who again is Diana. Thanks for entering multiple times, Diana. And you are getting sent this lovely Mulberry Yarns. It's a cashmerino, um, it's a Cash merino blend, so it's 80% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, and it is hand dyed in BC. It's called Violets, is the colorway. It is gorgeous. It's a very purpley. It's a very purplish blue. I don't know if it's going to translate properly, but it is a yarn that is dyed in British Columbia, so I'm really excited to send that to you. The next prize winner is post number 17 who is Crafty Knitter 7, who is Sue. 
Sue, I'm going to be sending you this lovely opal yarn. It's in a fabulous green because I know you're a fan of green and I have some other yarn I'm going to be sending to you as well. We did a little bit of a swappy swap, but I haven't sent her her yarn yet. Um, and it also includes some Angora lace to go with it. Ooh. So that's going to Sue. I also have some other stuff for you, Sue. I'll send it all in the package to you, which I will send very soon. And I have your address, so it's all good. The final number five winner is Saltbox Knits. Post number two, Saltbox Knits, who is Sarah. And she's getting sent the Happy Little Dye Pot yarn. And it is these lovely earthy greens. And it has a little bit of like purple in there, but it's more of a wine color. It's very... It's very earthy, I felt, so I'm hoping that's what you meant by earthy. So those are all of the winners. Get a hold of me, and I will send those out as soon as possible. I'm so excited that I got to share so much lovely yarn with all of you. And this year is going to be my stash down year, which hopefully I stick to that, because you guys know if I say I'm going to do something, I do something completely different. <laughs> So that's going to close off my knit alongs that I was hosting. They're all done. Uh, I'm going to think of, I'll think of some more knit along ideas in the future. I really enjoy doing a, a knit along. There's also some other knit alongs that are happening out there in, in the knitting universe that you can definitely take part in. I might just take a little bit of a break for a little bit on, on hosting and just come up with a really, really good idea. I'm still finishing projects. That is definitely on my list. I'm gonna finish these Mr. Fitzwilliams boxes first. Then I'm going to go really hard into my works in progress. I have a cabled cardigan that I really wanna finish. I don't know if it's gonna fit me anymore because when I started it, I weighed probably about 20 pounds less than I do now. But I'm also going to work on that as well. That's going to be in the future as well. So that is it for my knitting content, knit alongs, etc. So now we're going to go into jibber jabber. Jibber jabber is just kind of where I go and talk about stuff that's happening in my life. So if you're not interested in that, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you have an amazing day. And to the rest of you, let's get into it. A couple people have mentioned this picture that's behind me. Um... And I just wanted to talk briefly about this before we go into the into the jibber jabber jibber jabber. This is a picture that was done of me when I was six years old, I do believe. It was done in, yeah, I was six years old when that was, was done. It was a charcoal sketch done in Stanley Park when I was six. And this is the room that I have it in. I don't really have another place for it, but I love it. I actually remember that day very vividly being in Stanley Park. I did not want them to draw me. I did not, did not, did not. I was, I had a fit. I like a total, total meltdown that day. And if you look carefully, if you can see closely when you come, if, if you ever saw it in person, you can see that there's like in my eyes, there's a sadness and, and I had been bawling my face off and I sat down on the ground and my dad was pulling me, <laughs> trying to get me to sit in the chair. It was super dramatic. Finally sat down. I was really sad. <laughs> and then I got my picture drawn and, and I, I love it. I was six. <laughs> what can I say? So that is the story behind that, that picture that I have there. And yeah, I had my nice little 80s mullet. <laughs> you can see my hair is cut short here because I was a hair sucker. So I would suck on my hair and my mom just cut it short so I couldn't couldn't suck on my hair or pull on my hair because I did that too. So she just shortened it so I had a nice little mullet. And at one point the whole top of that was permed, but the bottom was straight. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty rad. <laughs> So that's me at six. It looks very similar to one of my my little girls as well. So that that's it. Some things that have been happening. I posted something on Instagram 
uh, a couple weeks ago when something was very, very fresh and new and my sister said, hey, you might want to just sit on that for a little while before you uh, talk about it. I'm going to talk about it briefly here and then I'm not going to talk about it again. So this is the one and only time I'm going to talk about this unless I actually get some, I'm, I'll just go into it and I'll explain. <laughs> so I was looking into getting some testing done for uh, somebody I know and love. We have Asperger's in my family, um, undiagnosed Asperger's, and it goes back for generations and generations. They're very strong, strong traits in our family. And it wasn't something that when my dad was young, when my brothers were young, when my grandpa was around his dad and his dad, um, it wasn't something that people were tested for. It wasn't even known about really until probably the 60s and 70s. Um, and as far as that's concerned, it wasn't actually... Asperger's, it, there was autism and Asperger's and Asperger's was something that girls didn't have. It was only a boys thing because it was this, 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 and this, and these are the criteria and that's how that fits in and girls don't get it. So even when I was young, it was not something that girls had. And it is, if you're wondering, it's a, um, it's, Essentially, it's how you process information and what what you do with that. And it, it is processing information differently and same on both that you can't read facial um, expressions very well. Uh, you communicate differently. You have some oddities about your personality. I'm simplifying. If you're interested, go look into it. Absolutely. But this is just simplification because I'm, this is not... <laughs> what this is about anyway so but when I was young it wasn't a thing that that girls had so there was never any um supports for girls that that struggled in in those ways and it is in my family history we've known about these members of the family and their struggles and the things that they've had to deal with um with Asperger's, it's also a higher IQ kind of side of side of things. And my dad has a really high IQ, like genius level, but he's so socially inept, <laughs> which, um, and he won't, he won't ever go get tested. There's, there's, there's nothing for it, but we just respond to him in, in that way uh, and just try to help minimize overreaction essentially so I was looking into it for uh, somebody I know and love who I think would benefit from some extra uh, extra resources and support in that direction and has a lot of the signs when I was looking into it I found out that girls actually present differently than boys and there's female presenting behaviors and there's male presenting behaviors and because women socialize differently we learn how to deal with it differently so as part of going through the process I was found these things called AQ tests and I looked into it and and I took one because I was going to be supportive I'm I am supportive to this other person that I care about and I just wanted to be able to help them through the process of answering these AQ tests because that's usually the founding step for people to step further to learn more and to go into getting a diagnosis. So took this AQ test as, as a supportive person and I scored very high personally. And then I took another one and I took another one. And then I was like, well, this is just an internet test, so I don't really trust it. So I found a study that was being done and I did their AQ test through them and I scored very high for personally. And um, and it blew the lid off my world for a few days <laughs> because it wasn't something I ever considered for myself. And that's one thing is that you can't necessarily see it 
for yourself. You just know how you respond to the world around you. And that just made it very clear for me. And it and I didn't just score in the you should get checked category. I scored in the this would just be confirmation if you go and get tested. So um, and I also uh, participated in another study because part of it is hyper focusing on the thing that that's interesting you at the moment. So I also participated in another study already. And it was a face recognition study, um, and it's looking at eyes and trying to read what people are feeling within what their eyes are saying. And I definitely scored in the realm of being positive there as well. So that has made me rethink a whole bunch of stuff in my life and a whole bunch of different situations I've had, interactions I've had, and things that have gone on in my life. I was actually homeschooled from grade seven to grade 12 because I was bullied really badly because I was an odd kid. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of stuff around that that really, really makes sense now. A lot of behaviors that I had that I have learned to approach differently just because they're not socially acceptable. So I learned different ways of, of dealing with that. Um, so yeah, so I am looking into getting tested. It's a long journey. It's at least two years in between two and $4,000 to get confirmed. I don't need that personally myself to know where I stand. But if any of you happen to be doctors in the field or are interested in getting in contact with me regarding getting tested, etc., then I would really appreciate that because that is that is kind of a road that I would really like to just go down just, just for the fact that I have that confirmation. Um, but I scored high enough to know that I don't actually need that confirmation. And I have developed a lot of uh, skills to to deal with with um, with my how I interact socially still is if you've actually met me in person and you and you know, and this is something that I talked about a lot before this came out is that I do not do well in crowds at all. I My anxiety goes through the roof and it's not an anxiety issue. I'm not concerned about being with people. That's not the, the thing that bothers me. It's the how I act when I'm around a lot of people and then I leave and I'm just completely wiped, completely, completely wiped. Just so... Um, this is this is new for me and I wanted to sit with it a little bit longer before I talked about it But I need to talk about it with you guys today because I need to have a little bit of transparency because I put that post out there And then I just wanted to follow up with you guys and let you know how that's going um, We're still looking into having the person that I love and adore um, getting assessed and I don't know for her. I don't know if we will be going the whole way, but um because there's just so much showing up that I know for her that she is somewhere on the spectrum. And that's that's the thing too, is that it's a spectrum. You can be just barely on it or really on it or like at the top end of it. Um, but just so that she can have along the journey, if, if the school system knows that we're going down this road, then they help implement stuff because they know it takes a couple years to get the whole thing done, uh, they'll in implement additional supports. So along the way, so I don't know how far along we're, we're actually going to go with it, but we are helping with skill building and, um, recognizing emotions and when that meltdown is about to happen and how that feels and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, this is a super ha heavy ending to my my episode, uh, but I did want to address that with you guys, and it is for me. It is it is a big deal. It like blew the lid off my life for a few days. It was the only thing I could think about, and and um, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'm not going to talk about it on the podcast. That's not what this is for, but um. 
I just wanted to let you guys know where I'm at with that and that I'm going to continue going in the direction of, of diagnosis. If not for me, then for the people in my life who don't, um, don't quite get it, I guess (laughs) is the best way, best way to put it. Um, yeah, so I want to talk about something else that's a little lighter so that we end this on a, on a lighter note. This year, I'm hoping to stash down. Whether I am selling some yarn online and stashing down that way or just knitting like crazy, I want to pare down my stash quite a bit. I I need to have less. (laughs) I need to have less. I have a lot and and it is it is my obsession. It is the thing that I love and I want to spend all of my time doing and I would do it all day, every day, forever and ever and ever if I could. (laughs) So I know I will get through my stash. I probably won't get through all of it this year, but I'm going to aim to get through. Let's make a goal. Um, I'm going to say probably four skeins a month is going to be my goal to get through. I know I did that in, I did, I blew that out of the water in three weeks before Christmas doing those four sweaters. That was a lot of stash, which it feels great because now the space that that was taking up is empty and I like that. So that's, that's really good. And I have some patterns that I really want to get knitting that are not designs that don't require any of that extra brain space. I don't, I don't really have that extra brain space at the moment. I don't have, um, I just need to just be for a little while, (laughs) I feel like, and not put that added pressure on me. I'm still processing lots of stuff. So, um, yeah. So I think that's it for me for today. I really appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for sticking around. If you stuck around this long and you got to hear that awesome story of mine. Um, I hope you all have an amazing day, an amazing week. I hope that your new year is full of all of the knitting goodness. And I hope that you are doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. Have an amazing day. Until next time.